What's up, everybody? Tendo here, and here's what's happening on today's episode. A lot of the usual, we gotta ship some stuff off here at the house, we gotta get some stuff cleaned up in the game room, but we're gonna do something extra special today. I've got my Sega Genesis collection out, and I'm gonna show off some of it and talk about it, and uh, we're gonna have a good time, so stick around. You know, it's a funny thing having a space in your house that is strictly a workspace. Not everybody is able to do that. Honestly, we have to make some pretty interesting sacrifices to do that because this is our living room. I don't know if some of you have ever noticed this before, but there should be a couch and a TV in here. But because we're so serious about this channel and stuff, we figured we might as well go ahead and sacrifice our living room for both a game room, which is over here, and then over here is our workshop. See, there's where my 3D printer is, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, one of the biggest downsides to having it this way isn't not having a couch, not having a TV. The biggest downside is that we spend so much time in this space working that uh, it becomes a really, really big hassle to keep it to keep it orderly, to keep it organized, because every single day that we shoot a video, we've also got to spend some time cleaning up. So to be honest with you, most days before we shoot a video, before we do anything in here, I've got to wake up early and come in here and reorganize it. It's almost, I'm not, you know, it's almost a daily thing. I'm not complaining. I'm not telling you all this to complain. I'm just kind of showing you something else about our uh, daily video making routines. So. I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna clean it up real quick. I'll back it up so you can see kind of a wider shot of what's going on here, because it's a mess. It's a it's a big old mess over here. Uh, I don't know these rolly carts. These rolly carts that I have. These are another project that needs to get done for something else completely. Those are for our toy booths, but I've just kind of been uh, taking them apart and putting them back together in the configuration that I want, and then. Every other day, it seems like I bring home more bouncy balls from the thrift store or from, you know, Walmart. I get them out of the quarter machines. And then you guys send me some. Here's a whole bag full. My bouncy ball machine is almost full. This might actually do it. We might actually be ripped after these bouncy balls. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. That's so close. You guys remember when this machine had no bouncy balls? Well, that is no longer the case. We've got hella bouncy balls. My dice machine though, that's not really the case. <laughs> we need quite a few more dice. One of the hardest things too recently about cleaning up this uh, game room every day is that we're always pricing new stuff to go in our toy booths or bringing home new product to go in our toy booths. And because of the coronavirus and stuff, our toy booths are closed down. So we've just got stuff piling up. So it's just making a mess. Gonna, gonna sell that Power Ranger cup. Got some Skylander stuff. I don't know what to do with it all. So it just kind of ends up in a pile. And cables. <laughs> My life is, uh, it sometimes feels like my life is nothing but dealing with cables. When you've got, I don't know how many, I've never counted them, but you've got tons and tons of gaming systems, and you've got HDMI's for each one, you've got capture devices for each one, you have three computers to plug them all into, to capture them to stream from, it gets a little, it gets a little unruly. And then when you've got a room full of rubber ducks, you know, things happen. And then sometimes you've got just big flus laying around. He's so mad, he don't like to be held. Oh look, another bouncy ball. That one's got sticky. That's tidy-ish. Now I've got to get a bunch of stuff put together because we sold a handful of things over on our website, Tindo's Trash. And uh, yeah, I got to deal with that, which I'm really excited about because we've got some new prints. So can't wait to look at those. You know, a lot of the time this morning routine of cleaning up the game room involves a heavy amount of scanning video games into my collector app. That's not been happening so much recently because of course the coronavirus has everything locked down and your boy can't go out to the thrift store and buy a hundred video games every day. So I've actually only acquired one new game this week, Kokoto Kart Racing, which I'm actually a little bit excited about, uh, even though it kind of just looks like a absolutely terrible nonsense game. I'm excited about it because racing games are one of my favorite types of video games to play right there behind platformer games. 
and uh, we've talked about doing a series on the channel where we maybe perhaps regularly play just racing games because we have a series where we do bad video games and honestly that could probably fit in there very well but we noticed whenever we did any sort of racing game on that bad video game series that uh, they were never bad because even a bad racing game is still competitive and it's still fun to play with people so We've mulled over different ways to do a racing series and make it fit our channel. And it's a difficult thing because normally uh, channels get larger gaming related or gaming, I would say, adjacent channels like ours is. Uh, they'll often kind of split off and create a separate channel uh, when they get so big to just do gaming on or to do the other thing they do on so that it doesn't muddy up their regular channel. And we're not quite that big at the moment, you know, it wouldn't quite make sense for us to make a second channel just to put gameplays on. But I'd kind of like to get there one day because I'm getting to the point where I have a hundred <laughs> random racing games I'd never heard of before I acquired them, you know. And I think it would be fun to start showing them off because, you know, most of you watching that or this are not going to have played this. But I'm sure some of you have. But I just think it would be cool to like, you know, really just make a catalog somewhere on the internet. Uh, video footage of all these terrible racing games. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that on the bucket list. Find a way to play all of them. But let's get this scanned in. Add barcode. Add to collection. Value completed in box six dollars and six cents. Hell Satan. All right, Adam, be quiet. I gotta I gotta talk to the camera. You know, one of the most asked questions I get on the channel are, Hey Tindo, who's your favorite YouTube channel? And uh, Adam Savage has tested, hands down, favorite channel. Uh, they do a little bit of gaming stuff. Mostly they focus on VR when they do anything gaming. But outside of that, it's uh, Adam Savage from the Mythbusters. So he's always making stuff during cosplay or whatever. So what I do when there's a lot of work to be around the house, I go put my working tank top on. Sometimes I do a bandana if it's hot enough. I turn Adam Savage on and usually listen to him, and he usually gets me motivated to clean up the shop, to clean up the game room, because, uh, you yeah, know, that's kind of his thing. Uh, uh, productivity, etc. So, if you ever wondered who's my favorite YouTuber, Adam Savage is tested. Check it out. COVID-19. Hannah's about to start packaging all the stuff that's going out in the mail. And I have gotten some of my storage drawers out of, the, out of my storage unit so that I can kind of put certain stuff in them. I once upon a time got rid of every drawer in the house and made everything accessible at an arm's length. And I still mostly have my most used tools that way, but there's stuff like paint, et cetera, et cetera, that I need to get put into drawers. So I'm gonna organize some paint to these drawers today. Not that I really have any painting projects coming up, but just hitting everything with a little disinfectant because that's just where we are now just to put my mind at ease. All right, paint. When you do as much ridiculous creative stuff as I do, it's kind of dumb how much nonsense you end up with. It's all this acrylic paint. Honestly, I should throw this cheap acrylic paint away. I've stopped using it because it's just uggo. Now there's some good oil paints in here. Suede Nubuck Protector, okay? Don't know what that is. This is the good stuff right here. Most of this paint that I have, and it's quite considerable, this is all from the bins. I bring it all home from the Goodwill bins and at one or two times a year I need some fancy paints for a project. These work quite well. I haven't had any problem with much of it drying up yet, but I haven't had any of it more than probably a year, year and a half. And then what's left, is oil paint. That stuff right there is worth its weight in gold. I've got a couple Bob Ross sets in here that if you were gonna go buy this stuff at the store, it's like $100 for these paint sets. Uh, but your boy, your boy got them at the bins for nothing. So when I need oil paint, man, this stuff is just top notch. Love using this stuff. All right, we'll put all the oil paints in this drawer. I don't think I'm gonna do it right now, but maybe at some point we'll get around to making some labels today. You know, I might go ahead and put my paint brushes in this drawer. Let's see. I might have too many to do it. Mm, yeah, I've got a lot of paint brushes, don't I? Gosh, this is all paint, isn't it? You think I should throw this crappy Walmart paint away? 
We haven't used it in like a year. Well, it's like, you know, I've got a bottle of this in blue and I've got a bottle of this. What am I going to use first? Right. Right? Slightly different shape though. I mean, but not enough to matter. Whatever you're about to paint blue, you're going to use this over this because this is garbage. See, look at this. I've got way too much paint stuff. You're not going to be able to see it all on camera, but look, I'm six foot six. That comes up to my nips and it's all paint stuff. Look, paint brushes. Oh, look, paint brushes. But you know, this is kind of necessary because I do use these. I use these like I'm breathing air. I'll use one for a project, throw it away. Next day, use another one. These I do not recycle. These get used and get cleaned. COVID-19, COVID-19. All right, I've got, to figure, I've got the sorting figured out. Fancy painting goes in the pink box. This is for when you want to get your Bob Ross on. This is for like serious painting your walls nonsense. Makes sense, checks out. All right, sorting is done. Let's move on to these art prints. Ready to get these out the door. And I'm super excited, super, super excited to show you these new art prints. I haven't shipped one of these out yet. You guys have all seen my Mario coin artwork that I put together, but you ain't seen. I, uh, I printed an extra one of these myself to put it, to hang it in the room. Here is the art print I designed, Daredevil. Let's go. Favorite one. That's probably my new favorite. It's beautiful. This one is getting shipped out today, so if you ordered this, it's on its way to you. And it's brother, complete clone copy is gonna hang here in the room. If you like these art prints, go check out our website, tindostrash.com. I haven't added any new ones yet, but I'm, I've got some I've been designing that'll be up soon. But uh, go check the ones that are up right now. Just put my little John Hancock on it. All right, Hannah's gonna get those prints boxed up. I've got to get an order together for some of our 3D printed Game Boy handheld stands. So one Game Boy Pocket, one Game Boy Advance, and then two original Game Boys. Okay, got it. So we've sold four handheld stands today. If you haven't checked out our website yet, go over there and check them out, tindostrash.com. We have more than just Game Boy stands. We've got some PSP stands, and uh, my favorite thing we've added recently are some Wii remote stands.
All right, I'm about to sit down now and do something very, very, very adult. I'm gonna, I'm gonna file my taxes. I haven't filed my taxes yet this year because, as I'm sure a lot of you have done, I've put it off because the government uh, allowed us to do so because of the coronavirus. But uh, I'm not doing anything else. I need to get it done now. I've got to start by printing all my tax documents, and then I'm gonna do a bunch of other stuff that you don't need to care about because you guys don't need to be here for this. So let me get this done, and then we'll get back to something that you might uh, actually enjoy. You don't, you, nobody enjoys taxes, right? All right, guys, that's going to be it for today. To be honest with you, I did a lot of work off camera today. It's just one of those days where stuff had to get done, you know? So it might have left this video a little bit thin, but I'm going to make that up to you by going through my Sega Genesis collection. Actually, I don't know if it's going to make it up to you because my Sega Genesis collection is by no means super amazing or anything. But as I've said when I've done these videos in this past week or two, since we've all been on lockdown because of coronavirus, I've said I'm just trying to, you know, to do a, like a timestamp of my collection and maybe do this once a year so we can go back year to year and see how it's grown so maybe next year when I do this again maybe I'll come back to this video and show it off and show you where I was and where I came from the Sega Genesis is not a collection that I work very hard on at all as you'll see there's two stacks of games here and this whole stack right here is actually sports games right so these we're not even gonna really talk about just get a nice quick shot just look at all those right not stuff I'm really worried about and all of that there's not a game there that I paid more than a dollar for. That's just all stuff. If I come across it at the thrift store or at a game store, uh, I pick it up if it's a dollar at least. Now, the rest of this is actually stuff either that I've found uh, and got lucky to find or most of it's stuff that we play. Actually, I'll go ahead and uh, run through all the stuff here that is just stuff that I randomly found that we don't necessarily play. And I think it's only going to be these. Maybe... Maybe this one too. Yeah, and maybe this last one. So these first games I'm going to show you are ones that I've happened upon at thrift stores. And I bought because like I, I can have dreams of having a complete Sega Genesis collection one of these days. I don't know that I'm ever going to spend the big bucks that it'll take. But for now, I'm going to buy every Sega Genesis game that I come across at the thrift store or anywhere else for cheap enough. So here's a bunch of games I've gotten for about a dollar. So Arcade Classic Missile Command. Nice. And then uh, Eternal Champions, and that one's got my name on the front of it because I found it at a thrift store one time and they put my name on it and put it behind the counter. And then here's one I found at the bins. Matter of fact, there's two here that I found at the bins. Uh, we'll talk about the other one in a minute. Barney's Hide and Seek Game. <laughs> Sounds great, doesn't it? Found it at the bins one day. Paid for it by weight, probably, so 50 cents, maybe not even that. And then F-22 Interceptor. And also from the bins, uh, no, I got this from Savers, the Bernstein Bears. It's also got a Bookman sticker on it, where it came from, but I, where it was before Savers. But I bought it at Savers on a half-off day, so got it for a couple bucks. Do you want to say that again? What'd I say? The Bernstein Bears. Berenstein. We're from different... Berenstein! Di <laughs> we're, we're from different timelines, Hannah. That's all that is. Anyways, that's all the games. Those sports games and those are games I've acquired from the thrift over the last year. Mind you, and maybe it's important to understand this while we talk about this, most of this collection has been acquired in the last eight months. We did the math a couple days ago. So this is eight months worth of thrift store Sega Genesis finds. Which I, when, I, when you put it in that perspective, I don't feel so bad about it. Because when I thought today, oh, I'll do a Sega Genesis uh, collection review, I was like, ah, oh, maybe that's going to be a little bit thin. But I don't feel so bad thinking about the fact it's only eight months of thrift store finds. Here are the games that Hannah and I have bought together either by using trading credit at a game store or you know, splurging a little bit and uh, you know getting the good stuff. Except for one. There's two games in here that that's not the case. And we'll save those for last. But these games Hannah and I have bought to play. We've actually played them uh, quite a bit. Tiny Toon Adventures, Buster's Hidden Treasure. One of, yeah. One of Hannah's faves. Taz, uh, An Escape from Mars, one of my favorites. I love this game. I don't make recommendations on this channel much for games, but if I had to recommend a Sega Genesis game, I love this game. It is some of the best platforming, in my personal opinion, uh, from that generation. This, not so much. Batman Returns, what a difficult game. Me and Hannah even played it on the Retron 5 so we could use save states and we still couldn't get anywhere. It's hard. What a Burn hard. It with fire. It's hard. Tiny Toon Adventures, uh, Trouble in Wacky Land. Yeah. Two, two, I guess. That's fun. Uh, we played this quite. I don't think we quite beat it, but Hannah and I got a couple far 
uh, got pretty far in a couple settings. A couple far. Miss Pac-Man. Uh, I think that's another. Yeah, that was another savers. Maybe I, I maybe I paid up five dollars on half off day for that. It doesn't seem like it. I don't remember getting this, but but I did. All right, these last two games are two of my favorite finds ever. Like, literally both of them are probably two of my best finds ever. Really early on in this channel. Actually, it could have been right before I started this channel. I really don't remember. It's getting to the point where it's been long enough. I was at the Goodwill Bins, and I really was starting to become obsessed with game collecting. And uh, I found the Ren and Stimpy uh, show presents Stimpy's Invention. Complete inbox in a bin at the Goodwill Bins pristine condition it seemed untouched and at the goodwill bins as most of you know you pay for this kind of thing by weight so dollar 39 per pound it's like six ounces it's not much right so that was a really really great find and i i, I remember just being out of my mind because i think it might have also been my first inbox sega game back at the beginning of my collecting day. So that was a really happy find. This last find is an even better story than that. It's actually kind of funny. Uh, and it's really the best example, I think, this last game is the best example of uh, how, what level I was at as a collector or a person in terms of my knowledge of video games when I started this channel. This was this was closer to now than it was closer to the beginning of the, the of eight months ago when I started collecting all this stuff. This game was closer to now. It was like a month and a half, maybe two months ago max. And uh, it was the same. There's a couple other Sega games in here I got the same day for a dollar. And I got this game for a dollar as well. And uh, it kind of, it, it was a really interesting experience because it turns out it's about a $100, $130 game. So it's actually one of my most expensive games, like top two or three. Uh, there's a couple games I have, I believe, that are sealed that are in front of it. But it's like my third most valuable game. And so I, I didn't know. I didn't know it was valuable. I didn't know it was rare. I just knew that if I'm at a thrift store and there is a Sega game that's cheap at all, I'm going to buy it. If it's cheap and I don't have it, I'm absolutely going to buy it. So I bought this game. And I went home. I came home. I finished my video. I put it online. And I had clickbaited that video for another rare game, which is actually like my fifth rarest game. It was a, but it's like a racing game. It's just a randomly rare title. And I thought nothing of this game that I'm about to show you because I didn't know. I didn't look it up. And this is another good example of how I am. There's a lot of people that do what we do and they're just worried about price charting and, they, and they'll stand in the store and look at everything in price charting, which if you're worried about value and if you're worried about reselling games specifically, that's a good habit. I'm not knocking that. But Hannah and I... Um, are at the thrift store to make our living, and then I'm there to make videos. That's my priorities, us to make our living, me to make videos, and then game collecting falls somewhere underneath that, which I think is important. You know, it's important to know your own priorities and where you where you line them up. And that's how they line up for me. So that's kind of my excuse as to why I don't ever try too hard to worry about value and stuff. So I bought this game. I'm telling you, I bought this game and made a video and did not even What's the right word here? I didn't even I, I didn't even acknowledge this game because I didn't know. I thought it was just another dollar game until the comments started happening that day, right? Or that day that I posted the video. The comments were like, "Are you kidding? What? what, what that's crazy! It's like your best find ever." And of course, at that moment, as soon as I saw those comments, I went on to price charting and looked at it. And I was like, "Oh my god, that's like a hundred thirty dollar game." So I, I, it's it's on one hand it's a little bit embarrassing. I honestly was not really embarrassed at all. It was kind of too funny to really be embarrassed. But it was like it was like well here's the YouTuber guy collecting video games. I had no idea that Streets of Rage was such a rare game. It's pretty wild. I don't think it's worth. It's not. It's not the uh, most pristine copy because look at this. It's got a. Uh, I don't know what that. It's a blockbuster sticker. It wraps all the way around. So I'm sure that takes the value down a little bit, and I don't know. It's probably gonna be near impossible to get that off without tearing the sticker. I've never really tried. Maybe we can try it here. Come look down here. here. Let's see how far we can get without ripping something. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, that's that's not the sticker. You know, it could. I'm not gonna do it now. I'm gonna get some tools maybe later to properly get that off. But uh, it looks like maybe that could be recoverable. Looks like maybe that could be recovered. Uh, but anyways, I, I thought I'd take the time to show that off. Clueless I was. Completely clueless that Streets of Rage is, uh, Streets of Rage 3 
is valuable. But I have put it in and I have played it. It is a fun game. It's a really good one. Uh, but one of these days, uh, we're going to go back and do a video about that video. Uh, if you watched yesterday's video, uh, you'll know this. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch it because it, it was an interesting experiment. We went and... Hannah and I went and watched our first thrift hunting, first thrifting videos we ever made and just kind of commented on them and laughed about them. And we plan to find uh, some of our better videos from back in the day from the start of this channel and do more of that in the future. That's a plan that we have. Uh, and I definitely at some point want to definitely do a review of that video because of this situation I just explained to you how funny it is. Uh, but we've got to wait a while because it's too close to now to worry about, right? It would be, it's just still too fresh. But yeah, that was uh, that was one of my bigger fails. I mean, it would have been a bigger fail had I not bought it, had I left a dollar copy. I've left. The, I think I like taking my stickers off, but I only get around to doing so once every you know little while. I take a bunch off at once, but that sticker is gonna stay on there. That dollar sticker, can you see it? A, a dollar sticker on the Streets of Rage three, yeah. So that's that. That's all of my Sega games. I hope you enjoyed that. Now let's talk about probably my best find ever, even better than that Streets of Rage 3. I found this great condition working Sega Genesis and Sega CD at the Goodwill Bins. And this was definitely before I started this channel, several months before. Uh, I was walking into the back room of our Goodwill Bins and there it was on top of a bin, on top of a bin. And I took it home, I plugged it up, it worked great. And uh, I have the other, versions of the Sega Genesis console. I do not have a Sega Genesis 32X, nor do I have any games from that. But otherwise, I have pretty much everything else Sega Genesis that you can imagine, even some of the later uh, reproductions of the console or clone consoles and stuff like that. But uh, that's it. So what's your favorite thing that I've got that's Sega Genesis related? You know what? I'm lying to you. You stay right there. I'm gonna grab something else. I gotta figure out where I put it though. It's over here somewhere. Oh yes, I don't know how I left this out. I did not think about this one. This is the Sega Genesis Nomad, and of course it's got my copy of Sonic in it. Uh, my copy of Sonic 2. This is probably my single most valuable item in the game room. It is a little busted in the screen, uh, but the screen does work great. Just the plexiglass over is broken, and I've yet to bother to fix it. I can't believe I almost left this out. Maybe we'll just make that the clickbait cover photo for this video. Do you think? Does that look good, Hannah? Which side? What's my better side? That so, one. That one? It look good? All right. Well, there's that. That is officially my Sega Genesis collection. And uh, let's, make it look, let's make it look pretty like I'm in a fortress of Sega. How does that look? Is that a better cover photo? <laughs> All right. Well, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, let me know in the comments below what your favorite thing here that I have Sega Genesis related is. Also, before you go, maybe comment below and let me know what system of mine you would like me to explore next. Uh, we get a lot of suggestions. We had a lot of suggestions for Sega Genesis, so we got that out of the way, but our, probably our next most suggested thing is my PS2. So we're getting there. We're going to get there. I've got a few more collections to go. But guys, thanks for hanging out. Do me a few favors before you get out of here. Go look at those art prints on my website, tendostrash.com. Uh, I know you hear me ask a lot, but if you haven't at least looked at the website, just do your boy a personal favor and go look at the site. If I get more people on my site, what that does is helps me get boosted in search results. So maybe one of these days, if we have enough people go to my site, Google will recognize me as a real site and people might search for certain things that I have for sale on the website and I'll actually get traffic from Google. That'd be pretty cool. So you can help me out there if you just go look at everything. Just go spend a little time on it, you know? And also before you go, guys, go join our Discord. We've had an amazing week over on our Discord where people come and chat and show their game rooms off and show off their Sega Genesis collection. So listen, if you are a member of our Discord, if you haven't been there in a little while, or if you're not a member at all, all of you go over there today and maybe show me a picture of your Sega Genesis collection. That'd be a lot of fun because I know there's some people on there already that I've seen that have amazing Genesis collections. And I definitely think there's a few of you out there watching that would have some great Genesis collections that haven't came by yet. So let's make that, let's make that today's goal over on the Discord. Go show off your Genesis collection. And then guys, before we get out of here, do me a big, big favor and hit that subscribe button. We just passed up 1,700 subs and we're already like halfway to 1,800. It's pretty great. I like this momentum. So if you could help me maintain that momentum by hitting the subscribe button, 
I would greatly appreciate it. And guys, if you are subscribed, hit that notification bell so that you'll get that little ding ding sound tomorrow when we post another video. Because we're going to post another video tomorrow because that's what we do around here. And until tomorrow, guys, peace out. Actually, before we get out of here real quick, it was just brought to my attention that this Tiny Toons game is a Nintendo game. Rip me. I don't know why it was in those, well, it's because it's in this reproduction case that looked like a Sega Genesis case, so of course I thought it was one, but uh, oh well. I still recommend this game. It's a good one.